The other weapon that imperialism uses, which is a challenge for Pan-African Renaissance, there is religion. Some of us, you know, with all our radical rhetorics, it's shocking. We are still deeply Christian, deeply Muslim, deeply this, deeply everything but African. You see, the clapping has gone down because there's a lot of intention in the room. And we can't understand as long as you continue to see and to understand God and the Creator through the lenses of another race. You will never know freedom in your life. Never. Religion is a cultural understanding of the spiritual. That's why Indians are Buddhist and these Jews are that and this and that. It's just an expression and attempt to understand, you know, the supernatural. So when we as Africans continue the denigration, you hear Africans say, oh, that's fetish. Like some people, you know, when they see the cowries, oh, that's fetish. Do you know what it is? You know, this, this is where the problem is here. In the head. In the head. And if we don't fix that problem in the head and in the mind, we ain't going nowhere. You see, the Chinese are coming to Africa, right? Or they're already there. They're going to bring their own God, Confucius, whatever, whatever it is they practice. And you'll see Africans there, you know, worshipping. There must be a cultural revolution also. If there is no cultural revolution, our political revolution will not succeed. It will be hijacked and defeated. Because while we've done half of it, here, here in the mind because there's here and then there's here that's why there's so many of us in church if you go to Africa my god when some of the big churches have their congregations 10,000 people at one service well you know I can't even talk about because I'm just when they have their revivals in Nigeria do you know there's no space for them in the city they have to give them space outside two million people turn up looking for redemption looking for the messiah but we have to understand that because the state has failed them society has failed them only jesus has not failed them and the reason why that hasn't happened is that they're most unlikely to meet him the same thing and I don't, by, listen, I don't mean to upset any of the Christians here. I come from a Christian home, a background, you know, a serious Catholic. My mom has got her big shrine in our house. All right? So I know what I'm talking about. But in coming into revolutionary consciousness, you begin to ask yourself questions. You begin to free your mind. If, if we want to get free. Because there's some of us who don't want to get free. I must tell you that. There are lots of, no, they want to be a bit more calm they want to have access to the same privileges that white people have not understanding that so for, for those africans who want the same privileges i always advise them to go and look for a new a brand new race of people that they can exploit a brand new territory somewhere that they can exploit in order to have those resources because some of us want orange juice We want freedom without struggle. That's what some of us want. That's why we wait for the Messiah. Because you see, the Messiah is going to bring it, you see. We'll be folding our arms like this. And the Messiah will bring it right up to us. Say, here you go, good people. You deserve it. You're deceiving yourselves. And if we're not careful, in the next 30, 40, and 50 years, our children will come again. Whether we assemble in London, in Lagos, in Accra, in wherever, and have the 